Okay, welcome. Uh, today's edition, we've got a very, very special guest, uh, a dear friend of mine and uh, an amazing woman who's doing incredible things. Her name is Amanda Johnson. Amanda, welcome. Thanks, Simon. So great to be here. No, thank you. Um, so, Amanda, obviously, um, from growing up in Tassie um, and embarking on on your professional career, you know, you've you've done some amazing things. Do you want to tell us basically what got you started um, with that? Yes, yeah, so I grew up in Tasmania. For those people who are watching that don't know, that is a small island on the bottom of Australia. It's very uh, rural and it's very remote. And at the time, there wasn't a lot of access to mental health services. Um, so unfortunately, I saw a lot of my friends um, battle through mental ill health, um, suicidal ideation, depression, anxiety, and, uh, and, and unfortunately lost some of them uh, to suicide. Yeah, and, and obviously you mentioned, um, you mentioned I've, I've done a bit of obviously research over the years with you and the majority of these people were saying that it's, it's basically a burden um, that they didn't want to be a burden. Are you finding, you know, with what you've done and that, you know, is, is that the common thing that's happening at the moment or do you want to tell us a bit more? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in the suicide notes that I, I read, which was a, a difficult thing to do into itself, and the families that I talked to and those left behind from the, the people that we loved, one of the common factors that kept reoccurring was everyone felt like it was so hard to reach out and ask for help yeah. because they had reached out before. And before and before and they yeah. felt to ask for help again was so burdensome on the family or on the friends um, which we all know when we're of, of well uh, of, of well mind health that it's not a burdensome thing to ask someone for support and we do a lot of education around that now with things like are you okay day and we're yeah. always encouraged to stay connected but at the time um, there definitely sort of wasn't that push uh, to sort of open up and speak about mental health like there is now. There certainly weren't people walking around doing Movember with moustaches on and things like that. So times have changed a lot, but it's still there's a lot that can be done to facilitate that conversation. Yeah. And how did, how did you get started with, uh, with Be A Looper? Yeah, so for those people that don't know, Be A Looper is a daily checking app yep. where you can download for free. Um, and add up to five people in their support network. Um, I actually have five fellows in my support network and all the blokes that are in my support network, we don't really have those conversations very often about mental health and how they're feeling. I certainly don't ask them, are they feeling suicidal today? No. Um, so the app gives them a chance and myself a chance to check in each day uh, and answer a question at four o'clock, how is your day tracking? So anyone can answer anything. They can uh, check in about their anxiety, about their back pain, about if they're yeah. going crazy about coronavirus. So yeah. they, that started off as I would have my friends text me at four o'clock every day. I would set an alarm on their phone and they would send me a number between one and 10. Now my friends who sent back sort of a four, three, two or a one, I would call them straight away or say, oh, I'm just going to pop over with a, at the time, with a DVD <laughs> or a Blu-ray <laughs> a blu um, and some pizza. So instead of asking, okay, why are you not okay? Do you want to talk about it? Generally, when someone isn't okay, they want comfort and company. They want to be heard. So then by creating an app that asks that question every day and gets you to answer it in a safe place, and gets me to role model vulnerability and share how I'm feeling before I get to see how you're feeling. It was like, instead of getting all these text messages every day, which I would get mm. sometimes up to 40 a day, there's each person has a small support network where we all have peer support and take care of each other. And then when people check in a four, three, two or a one, mm. they get notified and it's like, okay, time to get the pizza or time to yeah. have a video call or time to get on house party as it is now while we're all in isolation. So, there's, or, or start a words with friends game, anything. It's just sort of facilitating that, that comfort and that caretaking, not necessarily the conversation. Yeah, well, the hardest thing I, I believe is having that conversation. Um, I've obviously been previous to it, having seen um, 
you know, seen a number of distant friends, I guess, um, go that way. And I believe, you know, there's, there's a lot more of it happening out there that we, we actually don't hear about today. But the hardest thing these days is having that conversation. Mm. And it sounds like, you know, when we're sitting at home watching the TV and, you know, something happens and you've got it there, it sounds like you've combined that, that world that we live in right now and that technological world, but also, you know, not having that, you know, if you're feeling down and you can't have that communicational aspect, it sounds like you've got that in that device, mm. um, yeah. which is exciting. So um, you, you raised a really good point right then, which is basically COVID-19. And, you know, there's a number of people at the moment that are sitting down, you know, and going, what the hell am I doing? Maybe they're not exercising, they're eating more. I know I've put on a couple, um, three sitting at home uh, with the chocolate. But can you tell us, you know, wh what should you be doing right now during this time? You know, sh should people be signing up to this app and looking more towards this or you know with businesses going back to work is this something where you can position it to maybe larger businesses where they can you know support their networks at work and stuff like that yeah absolutely look i think one thing that i've noticed personally in some of the conversations i've had with other people as well was at the start of COVID, we were having conversations about COVID and what it was like in different states or different mm. countries and how people were feeling and everyone was feeling quite anxious. But it also started off with quite an adrenaline rush, right? It was mm. like hearing this new information every day. Yes. The laws were changing. You, you know, you were looking at what was going on. Everyone was sort of addicted to the media because there was so much happening. And now that we're sort of a month, six weeks in, everyone's sort of the fight or flight mode's gone. Where so mm. many people are just going... Oh, and then the comparison again of like, I'm sitting here feeling anxious and I'm sleeping all day eating chocolate, but yeah. <laughs> on my Instagram, yeah. is doing workouts every day and you know, like the yeah. comparison. Mm. And I think it's really important for everyone to know that a lot of people aren't okay and there is no correct way to navigate this. Mm. Now, of course, we've got some hints and tips and I'm happy to share them with you from our director of neuroscience about, you know, going in the sun for 20 minutes each day and getting your heart rate up for 20 minutes each day. Mm. But also it's that connectedness. And I think where we've sort of won, I guess, in a sense as an app is with one low threshold action of swiping, just like you do on Tinder or something like that, <laughs> you can tell someone how you're feeling without having to actually pick up the phone like we're all doing, get on the phone to Nan and then Nan's talking about her anxiety and you're talking about, and it's mm. just all we have to talk about right now. We can't talk about the footy scores. We can't talk about, no. <laughs> we can't talk about our best friend's wedding. There's none of that happening. So the, all the narrative is yeah. surrounding Oh, did you see this happen to this person at this point? It's, it's so fearful and so anxious. Mm. So to give people a way that they can stay in touch with their mum, with their bestie, with their boyfriend, with anyone, simply by using a swipe, takes away that, that burdensome and sometimes uh, tiring um, thing of having to have a whole conversation about COVID every day because it's a really difficult narrative and it sort of fills people with anxiety. So yeah, it's the same with employees and workplaces or any type of organization, whether it be a sports club or a team or a school, it's to have to ask those questions every day is quite invasive, right? To the point where people become dismissive and yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. I'm okay. Because we don't want to talk about it anymore. Sometimes like a lot of people just don't want it. People either thrive on it yeah. or they're like, I'm so sick of talking about COVID. So yeah, we've actually fast tracked as our business, the build of our enterprise tool so we can get it into, uh, into organizations quicker. So people can actually have a duty of care provider in their loop, being a psychologist or an EAP or a team coach or anything like that. Well, it's mental health is such a big thing right now. And, you know, you only have to look at that, you know, sporting environment right now with recent developments in the news, you know, with things that are happening, um, you know, you need to be having that constant line of communication with your friends and family. Um, I'm a huge believer on that. And, you know, we've come from old, olding days back in the day where it was, you know, you've got to be big, you've got to be tough, you've got to hold it in, you don't tell anyone. To now it's actually quite the opposite. You should be 
able to express how you feel. And, you know, if you are feeling shit or you are feeling down, you know, have those conversations where you get on there and you do do that, you know, that is today's environment. Um, leading on to the next thing, obviously uh, pretty exciting. You won um, the Time magazine, Next Gen. Well, sorry, you're, you're a part of the Time uh, Next Generation uh, leader. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about that award and, you know, what, how, how you came about that? Yeah, it was a complete surprise, actually. Um, it was for our the business's work in suicide prevention and mm. I guess the fact that we've been so innovative and had such a wide scope and really being able to help a lot of people. Uh, at the end of last year, I was contacted by Time magazine and they uh, told me that they had uh, placed me as one of the next generation leaders. Uh, and it turns out I was the first Australian ever in the Fantastic. In history of the awards. Over, and they've been around for 10 years. So... In 10 years, they've picked over 100 people. Um, so last year's alumni were, were Greta Thunberg and people like that. So it was such an honour and has really changed, I guess, our position in the business and, and our leadership globally in our work in suicide prevention and mental health. And, um, you know, what's, what's your overall goal at the moment to, towards, like, do you have an overall goal that you're looking to achieve? Is there anything out there that you, you got your heart on and desired to achieve? Yeah, look, I think my personal goals and the business goals are very similar. Yep. Um, they ride off the back of just being a good person and a good friend and being able to support people in real time as they need it because I don't want to lose any more friends, right? But I also don't want, want my friends to go down the rabbit hole. So I like to be able to help them when they're a five or a four or a three rather than waiting to go and actually pick them up from the psych ward after a discharge. Um, so how that applies to the business is we're building an emotion AI with one of the leading content companies in the wow. world. We're about to deploy our enterprise version of our technology so groups of thousands and thousands and thousands of people can use it. A psychologist can manage all of their patients in real time. An EAP can manage a whole office building in real time. Um, so really getting it out to the masses. Um, and what that means is helping us to use technology, the technology that's already in our hands, to make us have better human connections with each other. So not to try and take away from that, not to try and lead us down our own rabbit hole, but use that connectedness because that same device mm. that lets us scroll through Instagram and TikTok's a big one now and Facebook and look at other people's lives, it's like, okay, how can we use that to really pull back the curtains? Because I know, mm. and you would be the same, right, Potsy? Yeah. Like, You've known lots of people who are public figures and I used to work in, I had a PR agency, so we would represent those people. And what you see on Instagram or what you see on TikTok isn't actually what's going on. So totally. to use your device to feel safe, to share how you feel, and then let a few people feel safe to share how they feel um, is really powerful. It's really powerful because if we just... Mm judge how they're feeling based off their social media we're missing those vital cues totally. as, as you and i would know like my friends who've passed away have been mm. head prefects they've been mm. business leaders they've been you know like truly accomplished people and it, often it's caught us by surprise we're like oh no how did we not see the signs so to give those cues in the hand that where people can reach out is really powerful well, that's a very good point you do raise because, you know, a lot of the times they say that you do not see those signs. I know in one example of myself, I never saw the signs at all and it was, it was quite crazy for that. And I just, it's, it's hard to comprehend how, you know, how you didn't pick up on things. So, yeah, very, very interesting. Um, so basically, with with everything else uh, at the moment, how do people at home get in touch um, with Via Lupa? Can you tell us a bit more how they sh should get in touch? And yeah, absolutely. We have a website, B A L O P E R, so B E A L O O P E R dot com, and you head to the website, and there's all there's emergency resources. There is a link to download the app, whether you're on iOS or Android. There's all of our evidence base. There's a link to email me if you would like to. There's lots yeah. of resources on there. Um, and just start that, that part of being connected to each other. We also have, um, if you're a business or an organisation watching, whether it's a sports club or a school 
or a corporation uh, or a healthcare company, we've got a link on there for enterprise. And if you want to be one of the first to use our enterprise solution, just uh, pop your details in there and I'll, I'll be yeah. sure to uh, look after you if you're one of Simon's friends. Uh, very good. Well, look, thank you. Um, thank you for your time. Obviously, you are a good friend and I appreciate every uh, everything that you do. I feel like you're, you're doing amazing things in this world. Keep it up um, and can't wait to, uh, to see where this heads and all the excitement around it um, with potentially saving lives, which is, which is awesome. So thank you for today and uh, we will sh chat soon. Absolutely. And if anyone needs any support, um, feel free to send either of us an, an inbox and we'll be able to get you the support you need. I know sometimes this conversation can be triggering for some people. Awesome. Thanks, Amanda. Bye.